Hey, this is Fibro Hell Michelle. I guess I may have to change my name, but yeah, you know, like Fibro Hell Michelle. Even though I was in the fifth grade, I remember my um, fifth grade history teacher, he didn't call me Michelle, he called me Much Hell. Guess I've always been a pain in the ass. Because I ask why, and I've always asked why. I just can't take somebody's answer. You know, my family always says to me, well, you're dwelling in the past. Well, no, I don't dwell on the past. I just like to understand how things really are. And the only way to have understanding is through A, education, which I never really, you know, had a chance for that. Or B, uh, educating yourself is by asking why. And you learn by um, finding out why people did the things they did. And you try not to repeat them if they were hurtful. Anyway... I found out that fibromyalgia has been with me a long time and it's had some major steps and I think I need to do a uh, video because people really need to know because it comes on pretty damn slow when it comes on but when you get to the chronic fatigue ME portion of it it comes on so fast it comes on so fast you think that you've dealt with pain before with fibro uh... my god you just haven't. Uh, mine started, I guess, um, I was always in pain, but I could work. You know, I still worked, didn't even know I was in pain. And then I was in a motorcycle wreck, and no, it wasn't my fault. A uh, Jaguar decided to uh, hit my hog, my Harley Davidson. Broke the whole left side of my body and really brought it everything on. And then, uh, stupid me, I got some good insurance. The better your insurance, the more you'll go to the hospital, because the better they get paid. I still think if I wouldn't have had good insurance, I wouldn't have had the hysterectomy I didn't need. They gave it to me because uh, my left leg was sticking so bad, I couldn't make it up a flight of steps, you know. So they said that that would go away with a hysterectomy. Instead, I was back in the hospital two weeks later, and I'm going to tie this all together, which I wasn't able to do until now. Uh, I had pain from my navel into my thigh on my left hand side, the same side they said it would get better if they took all of my guts out and eviscerated me. Well I guess you could probably tell it didn't work too well. Uh, the first time in the hospital was four to five days, the second time was seven, and the only thing they could come up with was uh, RSSD or S RSDD. They change it all the time because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Okay. So now I've seen the doctors at the University of Miami, Dr. Nancy Klimas and Dr. Reyes. They're very nice, but very busy. It's hard for them to really explain anything. And, you know, when they gave me my new diagnosis, I didn't uh, really think too much about it because all they gave me were a vitamin protocol to try to make my immune system. I'm like, well, can't be too that bad if this is what's going on. I mean, I was in more pain. Got to the point where, you know, you sleep for three days, you get up for one, you hurt for two more, then you sleep again. But now I'm to the point where I'm diagnosed with chronic fatigue immune dysfunction syndrome. And a lot of people want to change that because chronic fatigue, uh, you ask a nurse or a friend or a doctor, isn't that just a trash or a basket case symptom? No. It means we're tired, we don't get up, and we can't do a lot of things. But anyway, second one, sleep disorder which means I wake up every two hours, sometimes in fright, never rested, and generally in so much pain my hands are like this. And uh, the doctors now tell me that's because I have a vitamin D deficiency. I also think it's because of the, I'm going to say this wrong, I'm sure, lymphadenopathy. Basically, there's just a lot of, your skin is a big organ. It's the biggest organ we have. And most people think that lymphs are just, you know, here when you have a, a cold or, you know, around your uh, your area when you, you know, uh, you know, when you're, uh, anyway, we'll, go, we'll move on from that. But anyway, lymphs are connecting your body in every place, okay? My arms, I'm starting to look like Popeye the Pirate Man or whatever his name was. And I even eat me spinach, but I'm just kidding. Uh, my arms are so tight with the limps that are that are uh, in in 
I can't even talk because I gotta tell you the the pain from it is unbelievable. You can't turn your hand. You can't do anything. You, you you're like Princess and the Pea being in bed even hurts because you got to make sure that nothing touches anything. But the limps are everywhere in your chest, in your in your legs, in your head. You can't even touch your head. In your arms, in your feet. Uh, you, it, it's amazing. And once you get diagnosed with that, I got to tell you, this thing it comes along so fast. You know, it pretty much started with me when the trigeminal nerve went, went out, which I did a video about. And uh, I do these basically to sound off, but I do it also because it gets the information out to other people that may not have heard these symptoms before because people don't talk about them. And doctors don't know about them. And if they do, they don't tell us about them. So we also have fibromyalgia still in there. We've got cognitive dysfunction. Well, my family seems to think I'm just stupid. I stay in the past too long. Basically, when somebody's ill, they want to be able to say to someone, Mom, I don't feel good. <laughs> I've never been able to do that, but I was able to say it to my grandma. But you know what? She was sick with the same thing, and she's gone. So really, there's no one to say, hey, don't feel good, too. So I say it to this, to you, too. Um, Intersystole cystitis, which basically means um, either you can't pee or you lose your bladder, you pee too much, and sometimes it feels like there's a hot pencil going right up your urethra. Those are my favorite days. Yes, those are fun. Uh, CMV, it's an infection in your blood. The infection, they say, is what's causing these lymphs and and uh, making me sweat. Oh, sweating. I'm in Florida and people sweat, but I sweat. I mean, I, I go through the bed sheets two, three times. Well, I can't say a day because I'm in the bed a lot of the day, but let's just say the bed is wet and not with a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, Epstein-Barr is positive. Epstein-Barr is mono. I remember having mono when I was uh, in middle school. My throat hurt. Uh, my nose dripped. I didn't have any energy. Well, that's normal for us, but but a lot of us might have that. So basically, there's a lot of everything going wrong in your body. And when you look at peripheral neuropathy next to lymphadenectomy, and you see all these things, they go into your organs so you can't go to the bathroom properly. Every time I eat, no matter what it is, and you, you know, some of you are, you come up with the stupidest things like, did you try this? Uh, did you try that? No, I've only been sick for the last 25 years. Of course, I've tried just about everything. I'm an intelligent human being and tried most things. But when even your doctors from the best hospital in the world are just giving you stuff to bring up your immune system, actually, I think once I did, they put you on uh, CoQ10, um, I can post the thing if you guys would like L-carnitine for you know cognition, um, the good oils of course, vitamin D, which my body's not keeping any of, and that's why they said that I'm just. If you guys ever had like, those of you not in pain that don't get it, but say you've been running and working out, and you get one of those uh, stitches in your legs, and you cry for a minute, and then you have a vitamin C or a banana, and it goes away. Uh, that happens to me every time I move, from my hips to my thighs to my arms to my head to my stomach. It <laughs> watching me walk is like ooh ah e ooh, and not in a good way. So anyway, this is Fiber Hell Michelle. Now I guess I'm chronic fatigue, ME, sleep disorder, cognitive dysfunction, cystitis, peripheral neuropathy, vitamin D. Uh, Epstein Barr and XMRV Michelle, which basically means a virus they don't know what the hell to do with, just like HIV AIDS, just like Cleveland Clinic, um, the real one over there in uh, Cleveland. They did a lot of uh, work and they found out that we shouldn't be giving blood, we might give it to you. That uh, all different things can go wrong because guess what? They haven't put any money into it. The reason they haven't put any money into it because the doctors are giving us vitamins. So, 
big drugs don't make any money. When big drugs don't make any money, we don't get any research. It's really simple. I mean, uh, you know, Sarah Palin has a lot of uh, press. Why don't you give me a little uh, dialogue with her? I think I could stand up next to her because I'm just as uneducated and I got a lot of the same opinions that are completely different. But, you know, it, it's amazing. They're taking away health care. They've, they've even cut down uh, help for me. And I don't blame them. The drugs I have to take are running 3000 a month already. In order for me to feel better, there's another drug that would fight these infections. It's $2,900 a month. So instead of taking sick people off of Medicare, why don't you tell the drug companies that they need to not charge $2,900 a month for a drug that they don't charge that for for any other country in the world? That would be a concept, wouldn't it? That would be just a little too easy. These people just think about cutting programs that help people that are ill or sick or poor. Instead of doing that, negotiate with the people that are charging too much and then are making way too much money. When 1% of the me people make all of the profit in the world, that means the rest of us are. I'd say what I usually say, but somebody would say, oh, that's a bad word. Because you know what I want to say. But uh, I don't think it's a bad word because it's just the connotation you put upon it. What's a bad word is when your government gives all the money to corporations that already have all the money and then they pay billions of dollars to their CEOs that's a bad word when banks charge 30 percent interest that's called usury that's in the Bible that's a wrong thing that's a bad word so you guys need to bone up what's bad words especially you teabaggers you went to fight for the wrong things and you put the wrong people in office and you're getting the wrong results so I don't know how to call myself Fibrohel Michelle anymore because I got too many of the damn things going. But how about Logic Michelle or uh, Hey, stop telling the truth, Michelle. Let's stop trying those things. Anyway, I'm going to post my results on the net because there's so many people on Facebook and everything saying, I am sweating, I don't know what to do. Uh, there's bumps in my body. I can't eat. I don't know what to do. I can't go to the bathroom. I don't know what to do. And there's no answers anywhere. Hey, but let's still give lots of money to big corporations, not having to pay taxes. Oh, and another great thing. Let's give more tax breaks to churches that put the people in that don't want to give any help to the people that need it. This is uh, Michelle Palin. Oh, no, no, I'm not Michelle Palin. I'm Michelle Sertonio. Thanks a lot. Bye.